Today, many equate fishing with putting bait on a hook, dropping it in the water and hoping a fish swims by and takes the bait. George Washington enjoyed fishing as we still do today, but during his lifetime, fishing was also a significant business venture. As peaceful as the Potomac appears now, during April and May, the river is teeming with activity. That's because shad and herring would spawn up river during a four to six week time period. Washington owned three fisheries along the 10 miles of shoreline here at Mount Vernon. The whole shore, in short, is one entire fishery. It is said that when the fish were running, a person could walk from shore to shore and never get one's feet wet. To that end, dating back to the Jamestown expedition when Captain John Smith sailed up the Potomac in 1608, he found the fish lying so thick with their heads above water for want of nets, we attempted to dip them with frying pans. During fishing season, everyone save the cook and housekeeper are netting and processing the fish around the clock. Because there is such a narrow window of opportunity, the activity at the fisheries is nonstop. Washington wrote to his farm manager, William Pierce, and stated, I again repeat that when the schools of fish run, you must draw night and day. When they're ready to deploy the nets, they're going to place the nets, these 450 feet long seine nets, they're about eight to nine feet deep. Uh, they have cork along the top and lead sinkers along the bottom. They're going to tie one end of the net to a tree or to a dead man's post. And using these bateaus, they're going to head out into the Potomac, make a semicircle, come back to shore, hand off the net and the hauling line. Now the hauling line is about 12 to 1500 feet long. They're going to pull on it. It's going to cinch the bottom of the net up and then into the water with bushel baskets. They're taking the fish, tossing them on shore and getting them ready for processing. The heads and tails were removed and the fish gutted. These discarded items would make their way into the fields as fertilizer. The cavities were packed with salt and the dressed fish were placed into barrels for storage or shipment. Some of these salt-packed fish were used as rations for the enslaved population here at Mount Vernon, whereas the bulk were shipped down to the West Indies to be sold to the sugarcane plantations. Properly preserved, these fish could last well over a year. It's worth noting in good years, the fisheries processed over a million and a half fish. The income derived from the fisheries often accounts for half the annual revenue for the estate. So next time you come to visit Mount Vernon, enjoy the view of the Potomac, just as Washington once did. Imagine the general sitting in a small boat fishing as we still do today. But during fishing season, think of all the activity taking place here at Mount Vernon. Click the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notifications for new videos about George Washington and behind the scenes work at Mount Vernon.